Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Sheen, or as we say in Krakoan, <sighs> yeah, uh, I'm sorry, but the bloom is off the rose, so to speak. Hence the bleak background, because, uh, well, today we're going to talk about the latest round of X-Books. We're going to talk about New Mutants number three, X-Force number three, and blech, Fallen Angels number three. Uh, spoiler alert, I did not like this book. Let's talk about why today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. And today, you know, it does me no pleasure to say that uh, the bloom is off the rose, so to speak, uh, on a lot of these X books. Um, I really uh, bought in. I really loved House of X. Uh, I was buying into Dawn of X, but I had serious questions from the get-go about the dramatic impact of, of this story that was going on, the how these books were tied together, and especially why they needed to like double ship some of these books in a single month. Uh, it led, it's led to some uneven storytelling, to say the least, um, and we will talk about it. We're going to look at, uh, well, we're going to look at New Mutants, number three, uh, and we'll look at X-Force number three kind of in depth. I'm not going to show every page. Uh, and we'll talk about Fallen Angels number three a little bit. A book which I meant to take off my list and forgot to. So, I But I refuse to let my mistake be my comic shop's problem. So I bought it from my shop. Scruffy Nerd Herder in uh, Eureka. Shout out to those guys. Uh, but anyway, I've requested this be taken off my list. Maybe I'll pick up one of the new books as they start to come out but we'll talk about it uh, a little bit later why i didn't like this series uh but first we got to take a look at these books right and where else where better than the million dollar comics cam <laughs> yeah that's right today we're going to talk x books we're going to talk three and one you know uh these books these reviews these x books have been some of my uh, most watched videos so I, you would think I would take these and do a video for each one of these and stretch them out as long as possible. But you know what? I'm not going to do that to you because I'm just not enjoying most of these books. Of these three, I'm going to say I probably enjoyed the X-Force number three the most but uh, and Fallen Angels the least. But uh, let's start with New Mutants number three. Um, and this is a prime example. Now, this just came out a couple weeks ago. Number two came out, and I really enjoyed number two, written by Hickman. Uh, with art by Rod Rice, I believe. This is a completely different writer and a completely different artist. This smacks of a fill-in book. Okay, fill-ins are okay, right? But why double ship if you're going to need to have fill-ins, especially if it's of, uh, shall we say, varying quality? Uh, let's We'll take a look at this. And some pages are okay. Some are really not okay for me. And it's this kind of like loosey-goosey kind of weak comics that I just don't have time or money for these days. So let's let's dig in, shall we? Um, I like some of these characters. I like this Glob character, and I like the armor character from the from the Weed in X-Men years. Um, and then we also get some, some other uh, characters from the uh, Morrison years that are, that are kind of cool. I like the armor character. I thought she was a more interesting addition to, to X-Men canon in recent years that kind of semi-stuck has a neat kind of power set and 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 is an interesting character um there's some other characters we see in this book today that a couple of i've never heard of before and one is an old uh character from ironically from fallen angels the original fallen angel series but has nothing to do with the current fallen angel series we'll get there guys we'll get there um so let's look new mutants uh number three to the grave um, basically, uh, we're telling the tale here of, uh, uh, armor is like, you know, I want to look up what mutants are there out there that I know that have not made it to Krakoa and why. So they do a little bit of research and they find that their old friend Beak and Angel, uh, are living in Nebraska, I think. And now we get a little, in one of these text pieces, we get a little look at like, these are like, this is like the layout of the dormitories of uh the new mutants right so so we've got our old new mutants team that is off in space but now we're cutting back to krakoa for the new new mutants right these are the other new mutants i guess 
this book is trying to have it both ways. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if that's good or bad. You tell me what you think. Um, so we get there's nothing really meaningful here except to tell us these different houses um, and, and tell us the different groups of young mutants that are living in them. So we've got Generation X, the new X-Men, the Frost Academy, the Five, Communal, the Jean Grey School, uh, the New Mutants, ooh, and Omega House Redacted, who's living in Omega House. Party at Omega House, bro. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, uh, we get a trip to Nebraska. We get mutants in a uh, mutants in a cornfield. Uh, and they meet up with Beak, who they have determined uh, is uh, ha does not come to Krakoa with. Uh, his wife and kids because why because Beak's dad has this degenerative mental disease that like comes on really sudden and, and Beak is here it, they have to stay to take care of family which I think is pretty cool pretty touching um, in comes armor with some of their magical flower x medicine and like instantaneously pretty much cures the guy although he's gonna have to go through therapy and whatever um, meanwhile uh, they're excited about that they're talking about you know maybe they'll come to Krakoa and uh, uh, we get a little text piece talking about the disease, in death, the disease that the dad had, which I guess is maybe a real disease named after a science fiction uh, author. It's called Munis Motricium Dementia, rare form of dementia, commonly referred to as Taylor Ellis disease. Sounds like a Hickman or somebody who likes sci-fi. Uh, wanted to pay a little tribute to this guy. Anyway, what's happening next? But we got a band of baddies uh kid who who grabbed beak and angel's children because who were outside running around playing and these guys really look lame this is where the art starts to take a turn for the worse like a and then it gets even worse so let's look so we see they're in a kind of hostage situation what's going on oh but we got x-men here right so armor's ready to take them on oh no this guy's got a bazooka Okay, is it a bazooka? No, it's a rocket launcher that shoots a missile that frankly looks bigger than the launcher that it came out of. This is really crappy artwork and clumsy storytelling. And it hits armor. Oh, but she's got armor, so who cares, right? Oh, it turns out it's a power-negating missile. Okay, this is like the third X-Men issue recently with different power negation. Like, the Russians had power negation armor. The horticulture had power negation gas. And now Joe fucking, excuse me, Joe F and six pack over here has got uh, a p power disrupting rocket launcher. Okay, uh, the end. We get to these other two characters. I don't know who they are. Maxine and, or uh, Maxime and her brother. These are probably more recent X-Men characters. If you, if you know them and like them, Give me some info about them uh, in the comments. This was New Mutants number three. Next, we're going to talk about X-Force number three and then Fallen Angels number three. So let's get right into it. Uh, X-Force number three. Now, this book has been the book that I would say is probably the most essential after the X-Men itself. And certainly for this whole uh, Dawn of X event, that means that uh, uh, this book has been sort of where the action is because this is where Professor X got shot in the head and in this issue, well, we're about to see what happens. Um, so it starts off actually with a kind of cool scene and a kind of cool page. I like the, I like the art more or less in, in this book. And this is they're showing the sort of process that uh, Domino went through, I guess, uh, in order for them to, you know, they flayed her basically alive and used strips of her skin to implant on these assassins. And could use her like a skeleton key. Use that like a key, right, to get past Krakoa's defenses. Um, so pain don't hurt. And obviously that's gross. Shades of um, Ramsey Bolton in Games of Thro Game of Thrones. Um, but also an interesting, a cool twist. I, I liked it. Gruesome, but uh, interesting. And that's what X-Force is all about. Like bloody, gruesome action, right? Um, so anyway... When last we left Quentin Choir and Wolverine, they had just discovered Domino's body and they're in this Weapon X uh, body shop manufacturing these assassin things and they're like, oh, we're not supposed to kill humans, but these things aren't humans, so that's okay, right? Okay. Um, meanwhile, 
so they're trying to escape and they're going to get in a big fight. Meanwhile, Beast and Marvel Girl are talking about resurrecting Charles and Xavier. They're taking his helmet and she's saying, yeah, I think we can do it. And he's like, maybe we can do it. And should we do it? And they actually start talking about what I've been talking about in a lot of these recent X-Men videos. The idea that if you cannot die, you have killed a lot of drama. I mean, this whole thing, they're like, can we bring back Charles Xavier? Why can we? Why could they not? They have never once said why there would be any problem resurrecting Charles Xavier, except that I guess that it's been Charles who's been doing the resurrecting all along. But they told us early on that she, another telepath could do it. We've got Omega level telepaths here, so I don't see why it was ever in doubt. Anyway, it is, I guess, and that's dramatic. Um, so here we go with uh, them doing the process and doing the thing that they got to do, and up wakes Charlie. And um, okay, great. Cut back to Wolverine and uh, uh, rescuing Domino. She's got yet another power inhibitor device, a power inhibiting collar. Wolverine destroys that. Suddenly, all their powers come back. Right? They Quentin Choir or Kid Omega had been depowered, but now he's back and he can make his own psychokinetic rocket launcher or whatever and start blowing up these dudes. Good for him. Uh, meanwhile, there's the last of the assassins who's left alive. Wolverine kind of tore him apart. And they're trying to heal him, but healers are like, oh, there's only so much I can do when you've been ripped apart by Wolverine. Well, but you're a mutant healer with super mutant healing power, so maybe there's, maybe that's kind of within your purview. Maybe not. Anyway, they talk a little bit here about the fifth assassin and how that fifth bot person was, what was, um, something happened. He got, he died, and we see here in the shadows somebody came, and and killed him. We don't know who this is, whose hand this is. Some big beefy hand. Um didn't want this guy alive still and uh then they say basically the bodies are set to self-destruct these are like humans that they're jealous of mutants so they're like we can't have mutant powers i guess so we're just gonna like jam build weapons into their bodies kind of cool um next we get uh oh uh so magneto is about to meet with the press and tell him tell him about what's going happening in charles xavier and boom oh xavier's back He's been alive. They don't tell anything to um, the press about where he's been or even that he died or whatever. It's just he's back. He's here. Boom. And then they talk about how Magneto presented him with the Cerebro Sword. If you saw the last issue of, of uh, X-Force, Marvel Girl took the old Smash Cerebro and Magneto turned it into a sword. And then I guess he gave it to Charles Xavier. But we never see it in this book. It is not in any of the pictures here. This is in the plot but not in the pictures, which is telling me that they were drawing this ahead of time before everything was finalized. A little bit rushed and sloppy. Um, anyway, Domino is back and they're trying to like bring her back. Um, meanwhile, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Krakoans are meeting uh, uh, under the waterfall, trying to keep it quiet and talking about um, what's been going on. And for the first time, um, you know, Charles Xavier's like, I'm back, uh, and, 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 and that, you know, the enemies came and we slayed them, whatever that feels right. That's good. And now you guys, to me, my X force, this is the first time the word X force has been said. This is issue number three. So I guess this is the real like intro of the X force and this is it. This is the team. <laughs> Not a strong intro to this team or this book. We've got this other group here, the ones that were Domino is kind of her memory is all sketchy about what happened. They had her all drugged up and whatnot. All she remembers to do with the peacock tattoo or pe peacock mask. And here he's got the whole group. They are known as Xeno. These are like they're xenophobic. They hate mutants. They hate anything that's not human. Uh, they're the the big bad group that's going to oppose the X Force. Right? They are this group that has been coordinating attacks against them. Um, Right, uh, and next, Zeno. Let's go now uh, to the third and final book of the week, Fallen Angels number three. 
And you know what? I don't like it. It has zero connection to the original Fallen Angels series, which was a pretty forgettable series to begin with. Like, who cares about that book? Nobody. This is just a grab to try and go for nostalgia. Again, I, I, I'm not a fan of Kadransky's, Simon Kadransky's artwork. I don't like any of these characters. I don't like the story that's going on. I did not completely read this issue at all um, because I'm just not into it. I'm sorry, f folks. I let you down. But life is too short to read comic books you don't like. So I'm taking this one off of my list. And I'll tell you what. Um, there's some others that are not too far behind. This X-Force was just okay. New Mutants was all right. None of this stuff was great. Um, the wrap-up to this Dawn of X was truly Yawn of X. Not into it. I'm sorry. You, you're, the honeymoon is over for Hickman. Uh, I'm going to keep reading X-Men. I'll probably keep reading X-Force and maybe New Mutants. Um, and I'm going to do more combined reviews. I don't think I'm going to do individual reviews. Unless I get a million responses and views on this video. Uh, it's just not worth my time, to be honest. But I'm not going to slow down on reviews. I'm going to do more throwback reviews. I'm going to do more varied reviews. I'm going to do more indie reviews. They get some of... My lowest view counts, but it's the stuff that gets a lot of comments, passionate comments, and it's the stuff that I'm really into the most. So expect to see more of that. Hey, folks, if you've made it this far, you're one of the faithful few, and I really appreciate you watching this video. Uh, I want to thank you for everything you've done when you like and uh, comment on these videos. That really helps us move up in the YouTube search algorithms. And uh, when you share these with your friends and spread the word about comic book news, that helps us grow. We are ever so close to 500 subscribers. I think we're three or two away or something like that. And I'm hoping that this video will put us over the top. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to help us get to 500. But most of all, hey, just thank you for participating. Thanks for talking about comics. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.